A few months ago, I published a video called Why are Trimorans so fast? In that video, we compared the fastest trimoran in the world, IDEX Sport, which holds the record for global circumnavigation, with Comanche, the fastest monohull, and explained why trimorans are faster, in large part due to their massive riding moment and long skinny hulls. A few people commented that the comparison is invalid because IDEX Sport has lifting foils, but it's actually not because IDEX Sport broke these records in 2016 before it had lifting foils. And despite several years of foiling now behind us, most of the world's sailing records are still held by non-foiling boats. But if foiling boats are so much faster, how come they haven't broken more records? In this video, we are going to explore why. Foiling is when the hull of a boat is lifted out of the water by underwater wings called hydrofoils, like these international moth dinghies, which have been using full foiling since 2000. With the highest 10 second average of a moth of 35.9 knots, this is the fastest rated sailing dinghy in the world. The first larger boat to use full foiling was Lutropter, a French experimental trimaran. She broke the sailing speed record in 2009 with speeds of 52.86 knots over 500 meters and 50.17 knots over a nautical mile. She did briefly reach 56.3 knots, but not for long enough to qualify as a record and she lost control and capsized shortly afterwards. Since 2013, the America's Cup and Sail GP boats have also been full foilers, but interestingly, none of them have yet gone faster than Ludoptea. In 2017, Gitana 17 was launched. She is the first ocean-going maxi trimaran designed from the ground up for full foiling, but in the five years she's been sailing, she still hasn't broken IDEX Sports non-foiling around the world record. Some boats, like Alex Thompson's 2016 Vendée Globe boat Hugo Boss, are designed as partial foilers, where the hull is still in the water much of the time, but the foils provide some lift and reduce pitching. In this footage, Alex had broken his starboard foil off, so the hull is fully in the water. But despite sailing two-thirds of the way around the world with a missing foil, he still came in second and ahead of foiling boats behind him. So what's the deal with foiling boats? Why don't boats like Gitana 17 hold more world records and win more races? It's because there are a lot of practical and physical limitations associated with foiling. Foiling boats perform very well on shorter courses and hold records over shorter distances, like 500 meters, one nautical mile, and even across the English Channel, but not in longer races, or at least not yet. One reason for this is that the size and shape of the foil required to lift the boat out of the water differs depending on the boat and wind speed. The Moths, America's Cup, and Sail GP boats all fit larger foils for light days and smaller foils for high wind days. This generally requires lifting the boat out of the water, which is only possible if the boat doesn't venture far from shore and if you have the means to do so. But offshore, you can't easily change out your foils, so you'll have to pick the one that's likely to work the best most of the time. This would be like using one sail to sail around the world. It's a huge compromise and going to be suboptimal much of the time. The designers of Hugo Boss and Gitana 17 say lifting foils generate the most benefit, about 10 to 20 percent, in moderate wind ranges. So in conditions where the boat might have gone 22 knots without foils, it can now go 28 knots with them. In light winds, the foils don't generate enough lift to get the hull out of the water and just cause drag. And in high winds, at around 50 knots of boat speed, the water starts vaporizing around the foil, which rapidly reduces lift, increases drag, and even damages the foil. This is called cavitation. It's like the sound barrier of the foils. It's likely that Ludoptea capsized at 55 knots after its foils cavitated, so you really don't want to get too close to 50 knots, or even venture above 45 knots in a full foiling boat. In their 2016 round the world record attempt, the non-foiling IDEX Sport sailed a blistering 894 nautical miles in 24 hours, averaging 37.3 knots. And in doing so, they probably hit close to 45 knots a number of times. Because of this blistering pace and the 45 knot speed limit, it would be very difficult for a foiling boat, or any boat for that matter, to break IDEX sports around the world record on top speed alone. Gitana 17 knew they couldn't sail faster than IDEX sport in the Southern Ocean, but tried to make up time in the more moderate conditions as they sailed down the Atlantic from France. Even so, they figured the chance of them breaking IDEX sports record was still less than 25%. They did manage to beat IDEX Sport's descent of the Atlantic from France by nearly a day and a half, a margin they knew they needed in the Southern Ocean, but unfortunately they had to retire shortly afterwards with rudder damage. So, as with Alec Thompson, 
The complexity and fragility of full foiling systems in open ocean racing is another challenge that the designers and teams have yet to overcome. So that's why foiling boats are great for short courses, but still don't hold many records for longer courses. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and watch this next video.